Let's talk some chess. We've been going over some really fun gambits, so we might as well talk about the King's Gambit, which is one of the most common gambits that is played. This game is played in 1874. The player with the white pieces is named John Odin Howard Taylor. The player with the black pieces does not have a name in the database, which gives you a sense of how the game is going to go. And this was played in Thorpe, England, and Mr. Odin Howard Taylor opens us up with E4. We have E5, uh, and now the King's Gambit, F4, so the idea is you give up a pawn and hopefully get some rapid expansion and development from it. Black accepts the gambit, and now uh, white plays uh, knight to b3. You know, you have a couple of moves here. You can play d4, you can get the bishop out, but but here white opts for, for taking the knight out. And here black uh, tries to cement the pawn on f4 uh, with g5. This is something that I play a lot when I, you know, face these sorts of gambits. You have a pawn advantage, you want to keep it and, and sort of keep these two pawns, pawns locked. Um, the, the engine here actually prefers queen to h4 check. Um, and now the idea is the king has to move to e2. You can't really block with a pawn because then this is sort of scary. You can't take back with a pawn because then the queen takes the rook. So instead, uh, you get queen uh, king to e2, um, and now uh, g5, uh, only now, you know, cementing this, this pawn on f4, and now these are three difficult pieces to deal with. So you might get knight to f3, attacking the queen. Queen moves to h5, pinning the knight to the king, um, and now uh, d4 from white, and now this is a... Uh, uh, you know, relatively equal position, but better position for black than, than what occurred. But but okay, black wants to um, protect this uh, pawn on f4. That's a very reasonable idea. Um, and here we get knight to f3 by white attacking this g5 pawn, which is currently defended by the queen, but but not a bad idea to attack. Um, now black plays g4, so really going after it with these two pawns, just marching forward and trying to, you know, um, get rid of this knight. And the knight moves to e5, which is a threatening square for the knight, and it also attacks this uh, g4 pawn. So threatening to equalize uh, material. And now, only now, does black play queen to h4 check. Um, and, you know, now that these two pawns are in the vicinity. But it's not as effective now um, because uh, the, the better move here was to play knight to, g, uh, knight to c6 for black, sort of threatening this knight. And then after the knight takes back on g4, then you play uh, this queen to h4 check. Um, the knight blocks, and then you have this bishop to c5 move. And now things are starting to look a little bit hairy um, if you're playing with the white pieces. So um, that was the the proper order of operations. Is uh, but instead, you know, just straight away goes to queen uh, to h4 check. Um, uh, white here plays g3, and we have uh, pawn takes on on uh, g3. And I, I mentioned earlier that this was not a great idea, um, but it actually works okay for white in this case because you get queen takes on g4. Um, and now uh, you know the queen is uh, doing a good job protecting these squares and making sure nothing goes really wrong. So the knight is protecting the queen and, and you know, it's it's uh, helping out with the defense. Um, and this is obviously offering a queen trade and it's a pretty fun line if the queens are traded. So I'll just show you if uh, the black queen takes the white queen, then you get knight takes on g4 um, and then uh, d5 by black uh, attacking in the center, but more importantly, opening up a discovered attack of the light squared bishop to the knight. The knight retreats to e3 and now you get d4 and this looks terrible because the pawn is forking the two knights. Knights don't do very well with pawn fork, so it looks like you're losing a knight, but you're not because you get this knight to d5 move threatening to take on c7, which would fork the rook and the king. The good, the correct move here for black is to play king to d8. I don't think this bishop to d6 works because of knight to b5, but don't quote me on that. Um, the engine wants you to play king to d8, protecting this pawn, um, and now you get knight to e2, you know, running away from the pawn on d4. Um, and now finally black takes the pawn on h2, and this is just a really wacky position. You have a pawn on h2, you have two knights awkwardly in the center of the board, but it's equal, it's, it's relatively equal for both sides, and would have been better um, if black had just gone for the queen trade. But black does not go for the queen trade instead, black plays this g2 move which opens up a discover check uh of the queen on the king and this looks like a crazy move because white can just take the queen which white does but now you have this um pawn takes rook on h1 and you bring up another queen and now black has uh you know a rook and and uh the queen has been revived um and the queen is obviously very deep in in white's position but the trouble is you have these two knights and uh this queen that are really eyeing this black king that is in the center of the board and none of these pieces are developed so you have to be really careful here and make sure that white doesn't get a counter. Um, so here white starts off with knight to d5. Now these are two really threatening knights. Um, you know th this uh, uh, e7 square is being eyed by the queen and the knight so it's currently protected by the knight on g g8 but you have to worry about that. And here uh, the black knight goes to a6. And the idea here is you want to 
you know, when white put the knight on d5, you're threatening, again, this, uh, I guess not again, we talked about a potential line, but you're threatening this c7 pawn, and if it's taken, you fork the king and the rook, so black defends it with knight to a6. And this is actually not the, uh, the proper move, it's a sensible move, but the proper move here is to put the bishop on e7 and attack the queen and sort of try to force it to move away. The bishop is protected by the knight, so the queen can't just take back, so here the queen would probably move to f4, and then you get... Um, d6 attacking this knight, um, maybe knight takes on f7, um, and only now knight to a6 defending this uh, c7 pawn. And this is kind of scary, you have these two knights and the queen in the vicinity, but it's actually okay for black, um, everything is decently defended and this is, a, this is a fine position to defend. So this was the, the proper way to do the defense. But instead, black just plays knight to a6 right away, and now we get uh, d4 by white. And this is a really... Um, you know, it looks like you're just being aggressive in the center and cementing your knight on e5, but there's another reason to this move, which we'll see in a second. There's another way that this makes, you know, the attack really powerful. Um, and here is where black makes the sort of losing move. Uh, black plays bishop to e7, and this actually, I think, was an okay position for black, but this was the losing move. Um, the idea here is obviously you want to kick away the queen. Um, we talked about this in, in one of the lines earlier, um, but now it doesn't work. Before it was the correct move, now it doesn't work. So see if you can find the proper move for white um, that ends the game while I give you a moment. Okay, so uh, we saw that black sacked a queen on h4, and now it is white's turn to sack a queen, so the correct move here is queen takes on e7 check. And it's pretty disheartening when you play a move and you know you threaten another piece and you're expecting that piece to run away, and then it just says, no, I'm going to capture and, and sack this piece. Um, so what do you do here with black? Well, you have no choice. The only thing you can do is take with a knight on e7, but now you get this really, uh, this really brutal knight to f6 check. And now you have the knight obviously checking the king, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's attacking the king here, and the king only has two squares to go to, but um, it, I'll, I'll tell you sort of what happens. The king moves to uh, d8, which looks like a safe square, but now you just get this knight to f7, and this is checkmate. You have the knight checking the king. You have the uh, the knight on on f6 checking the king or preventing the king from moving to e8, and this is uh, this is game over. So a really nice sort of combo of knights. But wait, you're saying why didn't the king just move to f8? And you know now this knight cannot you know check on d8 because the, the bishop is protecting. Well. If the king moved to uh, this f8 square, then you get bishop to c6, and this is checkmate. And this was the whole idea behind the d4 pawn move, was to open up this diagonal for the bishop to deliver the final blow in this attack. So, you know, I almost wish this was the, the final mating picture, because it shows sort of white's intention here with the, uh, the d4 move. But just a, a brilliant way to allow for a queen sack on, on e7 to get the bishop into the game and team up with the knight to deliver uh, this checkmate. But, you know, this is also a pretty nice final mating picture. You have these two knights here. Um, doing the job. All of these, you know, pieces are not helping the king uh, be defended and are, and are in fact obstructing the king from getting out of the way of the attack. So a sort of semi-smothered mate in this case. But hope you enjoyed it. This was a fun way, uh, kind of a delayed king's gambit attack, but, you know, you get the knights out, you get the pawns out, and uh, you start attacking and it, it, you get some fun endings. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Drop a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you next time.